For the first time ever, a sitting U.S. president breaks bread with a dictator who many considers a ruthless, aggressive individual. You want to know how this all went down as the all new file starts right now. Everyone, welcome to Viral. Man, glad you can join us here. Use the hashtag Viral for everything Viral. Watch our archive back. You want to watch Roseanne, watch um, John Cena, Nikki Bella. It's all there at your fingertips. You can watch it all of us on demand through the viral playlist on Connect TV. Watch every single episode. You can watch the world with uh, Prince Harry and Meghan. Man, that was a historic moment for everyone who did the um, production of it. Well, let's get to it. All right. Well, man, the U.S. is, like I said, the U President Trump who represent the United States as president and Kim Jong who represents North Korea as his supreme leader met this week and in historic fashion man between the you the two allies what they gonna call themselves enemies now the two enemies turned to become allies after much anticipation for the first time ever meeting between these two world leaders after beforehand the two world leaders were taking spat at each other and now these two world leaders had come together as united as one we don't know what does this mean for the united states north korea having a lurking relationship hey many people thought these two world leaders were going to be on a collision course as i would have thought so too with the nukes and stuff the missiles and stuff but the mission was president trump wanted um kim jong-un to have complete denuclearization meaning that he should not even send his rockets up up his damn and the world had fool on their hands let's show you some recaps of last week's viral what we thought that this this wasn't gonna happen just take a look the world authority figures were scheduled to meet on june 2nd june 12th in singapore for this highly anticipated first time ever meeting but Trump decided to have cold feet at the last minute well, I don't get that well this when this whole stuff got started when Donald Trump had said this about him the United States has great strength and patience but if it is forced to defend itself or its allies we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. The United States is ready, willing, and able, but hopefully this will not be necessary. He called Donald Trump Rocket Man because Kim Jong-un was launching rockets on, on to sanctions and doing whatever you want to do while the UN's approval. <laughs> And then Kim Jong Un said this. North Korean leader Kim Jong Un has revived an old insult in his latest threat to the United States. In Kim's statement, carried by state media on Friday, September 22nd, he says of U.S. President Trump, quote, I will surely tame the mentally deranged U.S. dotard with fire. A dotard is defined as a person in a state of senile decay. The New York Times reports the Korean word Kim used is a derogatory term for a lazy, useless, and demented old person, and that the old-fashioned burn could be explained by the Korean state news agency's use of very old Korean to English dictionaries. Trump responded via Twitter calling Kim a madman who doesn't mind starving or killing his people and will be tested like never before. Meanwhile, North Korea's foreign minister said the North may test a hydrogen bomb. Do this. The president is focused instead on attacking the media, tweeting this mock video of himself tackling, then punching a man who represents CNN. <laughs> he wants to run across and just punch him in the face. <laughs> you can see, um, we cover in part one, that we thought that there was going to be tension, there was going to be um, um, collision, you name it, a battle. They was talking spat against each other and now these two world leaders have found some common ground, common footing towards each other. 
because it's anticipated um, meeting um, was going to happen and something came up with my pants and it felt being disrespected and things got smoothed over until now. Well, it happened on June 12, 2018, a day in the record books. Let's see how this whole meeting got transpired. Take a look. We had a, a really fantastic meeting, a lot of progress, uh, really very positive. I think better than anybody could have expected. Top of the line, really good. We're going right now for a signing. What are you going to sign? Chairman, give any comments about the presentation. What are you signing, sir? I'm going to announce you that in a couple of minutes. Mr. Kennedy. I feel really great. I feel about to have a great discussion, and I think tremendous success. It'll be tremendously successful. And it's my honor, and uh, we will have a terrific relationship, I have no doubt. Uh, so it was not easy to get here. It was not easy to get here. Well, it was not easy to get here. The past fit I work as fitters on our wings and uh, the uh, old prejudices and practices uh, worked as obstacles on our way forward, but we overcame all of them and we are here today. That's true. What do you think? Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. President okay. Trump talked to ABC's George Stephanoff about this historic event. Well, he disagreed with Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about tariffs and trade and saying Justin's going to be costing some what? Take a look. You know, this has been a dizzying few days of diplomacy sure. for you. You know, you're reaching out here to Kim Jong un, longtime enemy of the United States, coming off of that summit in Canada with those tough words for the Canadian Prime Minister. How do you explain that to people who might be confused that we're reaching out to our enemies, antagonizing our Well, allies? no, I, I have great friendships. If you speak to uh, Prime Minister Abe, who I'm helping a lot because, you know, Japan, three or four times they had missiles going right over the middle of Japan. I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Abe. Uh, I have great relationship with the new men who I like a lot, as you know. Uh, from Italy. He just won and, you know, we had very good and frankly uh, Really good with Merkel really good pretty much with all of them I was very surprised because we actually were getting ready to sign a document I made them make various changes and you know the so-called semi-famous picture of I've seen the picture Right. She was looking at me. You know what we were doing? We were talking while we were waiting for the final copy of the document There was that was such an innocent picture. You know, we put out that picture that was put out by my people, that was really a picture of me sitting this way, and I'm waiting for the document so we can final read it. What happened is we had a final document. I wasn't 100%, but I wanted to leave nicely. So we had a document. I get into Air Force One, the television's on, and I see a news conference being given by the Prime Minister of Canada. 
and Justin. And I said, oh, that's nice. Justin's giving. And then he talked about how they won't be bullied, how they And I said, what's this all about? He didn't do that to my face. What's this all about? But here's what the story is. We have been taken advantage of as a country for decades by friends and enemies both. We have been, our trade is a disaster, our trade deals. We lose $817 billion was the last count on a yearly basis. Think of the George. In other words, when you add China and all of the other places, Germany, the European Union is a disaster for us. We lost $151 billion last year. Billion, not, not million. We lost $151 billion. They don't take our product. They won't take our agriculture. They won't. We lost 151. Now, they were at the meeting, the European Union. I can't be thrilled. I let them know. And I said, fellas, we've got to change it. And if you don't change it, we're not going to do trading. Fine. I, I just do want to say, though, that picture was really supposed to be a friendly picture. That was put out by us. And we were waiting for the document to come back so we could read it. I left. Everybody was happy. Everybody shook. You should ask Prime Minister Abbey. Everybody was happy. And then he gave out a little bit of an obnoxious thing. I actually like Justin. You know, I, I think he's good. I like him. But he shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. That's going to cost him a lot of money. Well, the president feels like pre the prime minister, Trudeau, is going to be losing a lot of money dealing with that. But the president dished the um, World Summit and went on and meet with Kim Jong-un and they had their meeting. The president showed right here Kim the Beast. Many of you know who the Beast motorcade is, like the White House motorcade. So, like I said, hey, if you the Beast, you got the Beast. President Trump showing his luxury, showing his fine things in life. In the in the in the in the this, but um, watch this. As you can see, the body language between these two sitting across the table from each other. Let's watch this. Yeah. And we'll solve a big problem, a big dilemma that until this point has been unable to be solved. And we're working together, we will get it taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, we uh, successfully uh, shook off the past. We had a great time with the video on our phone. And we uh, overcame all kinds of skepticism and speculation about the salvation of the summit. And I believe that this is a big relief to me. I believe it's a big relief to me. I And I look forward to working on it with you. It will be done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. A lot of tension going on, but Kim Jong Un feeling a little antsy. Down thinking the president trying to set him up. The president thinks the same way, so it's kind of like a game of usmanship between these two world leaders. Who's going to make the move first? And who's going to make that move? Who's going to make that reaction to be more reactive? Well, whoever pulled this off may need <laughs> pull this off about peace and stuff like that because whoever did this should speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> well, I, I just felt like that. What um, the? It almost didn't happen, you know, but... Uh, oh, my God. I'm, I'm glad Dennis Rodman, the NBA legend, 
put these two together, you know he's friends like, with Kim uh, Jong, and he's friends with Donald Trump. Pretty, pretty, uh, so he had like, to be the one to put this together to, uh, and put this. You got to be kidding me. All right. All right. You know, what is this world coming to? Well, you got Donald Trump and Kim Jong. Will this relationship last or will this relationship thrive? You know, hey, you be the judge out there. I don't know for a fact, but I'm just going by the body language and this. They might well be closer than buds. And the United States and North Korea might be come one as only. But you, we don't want to get too cozy in bed with them and because we don't know how this is going to react. It's like, you know, you go on a date and you find out who you're trying to date and then all of a sudden you're kind of like, uh, let's go. Yeah. Let's let's get this a moment. And I know people, there's some skeptics out there that's like, oh, he's doing this for publicity and stuff like that. He's doing this just to keep himself relevant and do something controversial. Hey, we all do controversial things. We all humans. We all make mistakes. So let's see how this go. And then we can critique it later. But anyway, that's been viral for this week. I'm glad you joined us here on Viral. Thank you all and continue to watch Viral. Use the hashtag Viral. Watch us on TV. We ain't going well. But I've been Kenny J saying so long and we'll see you next week.